But it's good for us to be at East Gate this morning, to be back home, and to hear what God is doing in this great church. The Spirit of the Lord is moving in this place. And I say praise the Lord. And we pray for you daily. And it's just good to be here today. It really is. And especially, it's good for us to have our granddaughter and great-granddaughter with us for the weekend. What a delight that's been. And we're enjoying them so very much. And we're glad that they're here. Well, let's look into the Word this morning. And I appreciate Pastor Shannon asking me or sharing the pulpit with me today. It's my privilege. It really is. But I want us to look into the Word. In a few minutes, I'm going to direct your attention to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, beginning with verse 14. But I want to preach to you just for a few moments on what I think perhaps is one of the most important issues of your life and the life of the church, and that is the lordship issue of Jesus Christ. Is Jesus Lord of everything? Which simply means that everything we are, everything we have, everything we do, everything we think, everything we hope to be is under the lordship of Jesus. When God first created the world back there in the beginning, you know what he said. He said, I am a jealous God, and I will not tolerate any other gods before me. And then God sent Jesus into the world, and Jesus called his disciples and said to them on one occasion, if you're going to be my followers, you'll have to deny yourself daily and take up your cross and follow me, the Lordship of Jesus. And then they came to Jesus on one occasion and said, Master, what is the greatest commandment of all? And without hesitation, Jesus said, The greatest of all the commandments is that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is likened to the first. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There are no greater commandments than this. The Lordship of Jesus Christ. Now, our beloved church, we base our faith, we base our lives on two cardinal doctrines. More than that, but two especially. First, there's the doctrine of salvation. And the good news this morning, Jesus still saves. Amen? We just heard that this morning. Jesus is still in the saving business. He still reaches down into the hearts and lives of precious people convicts of our sin, and when we come by faith to an altar of prayer to repent, He is faithful and just to accept us and to forgive us. The gospel of salvation. Aren't you glad for that? Praise the Lord. We believe in that. And then there's the doctrine of heart holiness. And we do not apologize, Pastor Shannon, that we are a holiness church. We believe in it with all of our heart. Jesus said, Be ye holy. Why? Because I am holy. And we believe in heart holiness. We believe that there comes a time following salvation experience uh, when we allow the Holy Spirit to come into our life and cleanse us from all inbred sin uh, and to set us apart for His work. But sometimes we stop short. Sometimes we stop there and we fail to go on and preach that there is another work of grace. And that's the progressive grace of following Jesus. When we come to the place where we throw up our hands in complete surrender and we allow Him to be Lord of everything. Lord of everything. Nothing for ourselves. Nothing held back. It all belongs to Him. Everything is under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I say praise the Lord. Now in Matthew chapter 25, you've already turned there. You know it to be the parable of the talents. I'd like to rephrase it without taking away from the Scriptures and call it the parable of the Lordship of Jesus Christ because it deals with us using our talents wisely, giving our lives wisely for Jesus' sake. And the story is very simple as you follow along there. Matthew 25, the master had three servants. He gave to each servant some talents. He gave one five talents. He gave the other one two talents. And then to the last one, he gave one talent, every one of them important. He said to them, I'm going to take a journey, 
And I'll be back soon for accountability. There's always accountability. Amen? Amen. Always. And so he took the journey and came back. He met with his servants, called the first servant. I gave you five talents. How have you done? And the servant said, oh, good master. I've worked hard. I've invested my life. I've used my talents wisely. And I have five more talents. I have ten talents to bring to the table. And the master said, well done, my good and faithful servant. Then he went to the next servant and said, how have you done? He said, well, I had two talents. I worked extremely hard. I've invested my life wisely, and I have four talents to bring to the table. Well done, my good and faithful servant. He went to the third servant and said, how are you doing? And the third servant bowed his head and said, well, I haven't done too well. I have took the talent that you gave me and buried it in the ground to hide it and protect it. And the master said, oh, oh, you slothful servant. Take the talent away from him and cast him into outer darkness. But notice what the master said to those first two servants. It's important. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now enter into the joy of the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Now there are those that would teach us at this point that the joy of the Lord is referring to heaven. Do you believe there's joy in heaven? Do you really believe there's joy in heaven? How many of you are looking forward to that? I can't hardly wait to get to heaven. Although I'm enjoying our ministry and my life here, I can't hardly wait to get to the glory land. It's going to be a special time. There's joy in heaven. There's joy in knowing Jesus. And one of these days, one of these days, as we stand before the judgment seat, and by the way, Every one of us this morning in this worship center will stand before the judgment seat of God. Every one of us to give an account of our life to the things we've done and the things we haven't done. And oh, that we might live our lives under the lordship of Jesus, that we might hear the master say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the kingdom I prepared for you. And what a day that's going to be when we leave this old world and we're ushered into the presence of Jesus and finally into the gory world called heaven for eternity. I say praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. But this particular passage of Scripture, Matthew chapter 25, is not referring to heaven. Now catch it. The master said, well done. You've been faithful over a few things. Enter into the joy of God. The Lord. Now I'm here to tell you on this Sunday morning, there's joy in knowing Jesus. Oh my. I can't tell if you're asleep or awake. I can't even see you. There's joy, there's joy in knowing Jesus. Hey Matt, where, where are you? We need to clap our hands and shout again. I said, there's joy in knowing Jesus. Amen. That's better. Praise the Lord. That brings us alive. And there's joy in serving Jesus. Amen. There's joy in knowing Jesus. And there's joy in serving Jesus. And so that when the master said, enter to the joy of the Lord, he is directing them into the kingdom of God, giving them the privilege of using their talents for the glory of God. Of Jesus. There's glory in serving God. I say praise the Lord. Amen. Now, two things. There's joy in ministry, and there's joy in giving. Now, some of you are new to the church. Some of you I haven't even met yet. Praise the Lord. It's exciting to come into a church and to see brand new people sitting in the pews. That's exciting. That tells me something good is happening at Eastgate Church. Amen. Amen. It's contagious. But we're glad you're here. Some of you are brand new to the church, and you have yet to find your place. But let me remind you of something. Every one of us here this morning, young or old, has a talent. Would you agree? Look at your neighbor and say, you have a talent. You have a talent. Every one of us have a talent. There's something that God has given you, invested in you, to be used for His kingdom. Nobody else can use your talent. You have a talent. 
to be used for God. Now, some of you new to the church haven't yet discovered where your talent is, uh, what it is, or where it can be used. But I want to encourage you, quickly, find your place in the church. Find your place to serve. Use your talent for Jesus' sake. In fact, I would advise you, after the service this morning, to come up to Pastor Shannon and say to him, I want to volunteer. Now bring your smelling sauce, because when he wakes up, he'll need it. Okay? But volunteer, I want to use my talent for Jesus' sake. I want my talent to count for God. I want to give everything to the Lordship of Jesus. Now many of you, oh, many of you, have been investing your lives faithfully in ministry. In fact, Eastgate Church is built on those who have been faithful to ministry. Great ministry. And down through the years, we have been blessed, tremendously blessed, with good people, good laymen, dedicated to the kingdom work that have invested your lives in the ministry of the kingdom of God. God bless you. Now, if you're involved in ministry this morning, let me encourage you. Enjoy it. I said, enjoy it. Be happy in what God has called you to do. Be happy. Have fun with it. Don't complain about it. Don't fuss over it. Don't worry with it. You just use your talents for Jesus' sake, and God will bless you abundantly. Amen? Amen. Amen. He's given you a talent. Use it wisely. Enjoy your ministry in the Lord. Wife and I have been serving the Lord for a long, long time. That's no place for an amen, but it's true. It's true. And we're still enjoying what God has given us to accomplish in the ministry. It's still fun serving Jesus. It really is. Thank you for praying for us every week while we're on the road. But it's fun serving the Lord. It really is. Don't, don't be like the lady that stopped me not long ago in one of our churches. We had just finished a good altar service, and the Spirit of the Lord was upon the service. And this saint of God, should have been a saint of God, <laughs> been in the church, I've known her for years, sat on the back row as far back against the back wall as you can get with eight other people, and they were dead to the dead dead. Death was warmed over. I mean, they were miserable sitting there in that service. And after the altar service, I was walking up the center aisle, and she stopped me right here and said, Brother Stevenson, and I could tell by the tone of her voice that she was all been out of shape. She said, do you want a church? I said, ma'am, do you want a church? I said, I don't understand. What church are you talking about? This church. This church. Do you want this church? She said, I can get it for you. Wow. I said, I don't quite understand. I said, you have a good pastor, and you have the possibility of a great church right here. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. We need a good pastor. We need one that will preach the truth and one that will love us and one that will serve us. We just need a good pastor, and we need good programs. We don't have it. Wow. I said, oh, sister, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I said, let me help you here at this point. I said, I've been around the church a long time. And I think I deserve to say this, but let me help you. Good, saved, sanctified, dedicated laymen make good pastors. You believe with that? Now, you have a good pastor. God's called him to be pastor. And we're proud of him, aren't we? Always have been. But, amen, that's right. That's right. And doing a great job, but saved, sanctified, dedicated, committed laymen make good pastors. She said, huh, I don't know about that. And she stomped off. And when she walked off, you know what I did? I said, thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to be her pastor. <laughs> I'm not going to be her pastor. Miserable. Miserable, yet professing to love God. Or don't be like the lady that I met in a Sunday school hallway. <laughs> You'll like this one. And she was getting ready to go into a Sunday school class. And I just was passing 
conversation. And I said, oh, dear sister, you're going in to teach a class. And here's what she said. She growled at me like a bulldog. And she said, yeah, yeah, it's my Sunday to go in and teach these stinking kids about Jesus. That's what she said. That's what she said. Oh, I said, dear sister, let me pray for you. And I put my hand on her shoulder and breathed a prayer. And I watched her go into that classroom. Now, all of these years, I've often wondered what would have happened if I had said what I should have said. Or maybe it's good I didn't say it. But I know what I should have said or what I could have said that might have helped her. If I had to do it over again, I'd say, dear sister, please, don't go into this classroom. Those children don't deserve this attitude. Huh? Why don't you go to the altar and I'll help you pray about it. Or else go out to your car and turn some gospel music on and get victory over whatever it is that's bothering you. And if you can't get victory this morning, for goodness sake, go home. So you don't infect anybody else. Oh, Pastor George, I'm glad you're not our pastor. He's kind and loving, caring. But it's serious. enjoy your ministry. She was miserable that Sunday morning. Oh, miserable. She didn't enjoy her ministry. And she missed a golden opportunity of going into that classroom to share the good news with those precious children. Enjoy what God has called you to do. Amen? Now, not only is there joy in ministry, but there's joy in giving. <laughs> there's joy in giving. Praise the Lord. You know, everything you have, Everything you own comes from the hand of God. Would you say amen? Oh, Pastor George, I pay the notes and I pay the money. I know, but God gives you the ability to do that. Everything comes from the hand of God. Amen. Amen. Everything you own, everything you possess comes from God. It belongs to God. It's not ours. We're just borrowing it for the trip. Amen. You can't outgive God. How many of you say amen to that? God supplies, according to the Scripture, God supplies all of our needs according to the riches of Christ Jesus in glory. He said, I'll pour out a blessing upon you that you can't even contain. I'll do exceeding abundantly above all that you asked or think. And on and on the promises of God are given to us to enjoy because God is a faithful God. Amen. Now we have a problem here sometimes with our giving. I don't quite understand it, Pastor George. I, I haven't yet accepted it yet, but to come under the Lordship of Jesus Christ requires us that everything in our life belongs to God. Everything. Everything. So we give gladly. We give with a happy heart. We give joyfully, giving it to the kingdom so that God can invest it and use it for His glory. Now I'm convinced that probably the major issue one of the major things in our life that keeps people from being faithful in giving is simply this. We reach the place in life where we live up here on a high plateau of living. And it's hard to adjust when we have to come down. And we keep adding things. We just keep adding things to our plate. Am I right? Come on, am I right? Every day there's something new. i got to have this. I want this. I'm going to get this. And we just keep adding things to our place. Now, I'm not preaching against things. I wouldn't do that. But I'm just saying we collect too many things in life to enjoy what we think we're going to enjoy. And then we discover that after we get it, it takes a lot of time to maintain it. And we don't have time for Jesus. It takes a lot of money to pay for it. And so he receives second best. If we have it left over, we give graciously to the church. But I'm here to tell you this morning, listen. Based on the fact that God sent his son into the world to die on Calvary for us, Jesus gave his very best. And Jesus wants the first fruits of our life. Amen? He doesn't want seconds. He doesn't want hand-me-downs. He wants the first fruits of our life. And when we are faithful to Him, He is faithful to supply every need of our life. Let me illustrate. Wife and I 
have been married 57 years. Wow. 58 come February. Isn't she blessed? <laughs> We're both blessed. Oh, we've had a great life. Great experience serving the Lord, following the leadership of the Holy Spirit, letting God lead us wherever He wants us. It's been an amazing journey serving the Lord. The hallways of our home are filled with laughter because Jesus is there. Praise the Lord. Amen? Oh, what a life. But back before we were married, oh, I'll say two or three years before we were married, my wife-to-be set me down. We were teenagers and older teens sat me down and said, now, honey, if we're going to have a Christian home, and if we're going to really be Christians, we're going to have to learn to tithe. I kind of looked at her funny. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. See, I wasn't raised in a spiritual home. Far from it. I didn't know anything about tithing at all. But she said, this is scriptural. And to be a good Christian, we have to do it. And so she explained to me. You see, her mother had taught her from childhood a valuable lesson. That if you make a dime, one penny of that goes to Jesus. If you make 10 cents, huh? you got it? You got it? It goes to Jesus. If you make a dollar, 10 cents of that goes to Jesus. But what an investment. Where can you go to the bank this morning and get a loan like that where you invest 10% and keep 90? You can't do it. And God is good. And so she explained the principle of tithing to me. And so we started tithing even before we were married. Now, here's my testimony. Here's my testimony. All of these years, 60 years now probably, 60 years, we have been faithful in giving to the Lord. And as far as I can recollect, and my wife can verify it, as far as I can recollect, every check we've received, every money that's come in, to our family, right off the top, we give to God. Not after we pay our bills, not after the light bill, the phone bill, the car bill, the house bill. No, no, no. Every time, right off the top, because He enjoys the first fruits of our life. Amen. And for 60 years, we have tried to be faithful to the Lord. And the good news is this. He has supplied every need of our life. Glory to God. Now, there have been times we've had to tighten our belts. Sure. And there have been times when we've had to say no to certain things. There have been times when we had to walk away, things that we couldn't buy. But God has supplied us with everything we need. Praise the Lord. I remember those good old days back there when I started pastoring $20 a week. And that is the board said, if we have it. If we have it, we'll pay you $20 a week. After we pay the electric bill and light bill, and most of the time they didn't have it. It's all right. And I remember when they finally came to me and said, Pastor George, would you go full time as our pastor if we pay you $53 a week? $53 a week. Not a whole lot of money to raise a family on, is it? But wife and I prayed, and we knew it was God's will. And we said, sure we will. And God began to bless and I tell you, sure, it was hard times. Sure, it was tough. Sure, sure, sure. But I tell you, God supplied every need, and some of our fondest memories are about those early days of memories of, of, of ministry when we served the Lord. God is faithful. And there's joy this morning in knowing Jesus. And there's joy this morning in serving the Lord. There's joy in ministry. Enjoy it. And there's joy in giving. For goodness sake, let's obey the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lordship of Jesus Christ. Using our talents uh, for His glory and for the kingdom of God. Investing our lives in the kingdom work. Giving God the very best fruits of our life. Amen. Thank God. Oh, thank God for the experience of salvation. Thank God for the experience of sanctification, but thank God for the Lordship of Jesus Christ, where He becomes Lord of everything in our life. What a way to live. What a way to live. Every morning in my prayer time early, I commit the day. I thank the Lord, first of all, waking me up to a brand new day. 
And then I tell the Lord, Lord, this is a new day. And therefore, I commit it to you. I want you to be Lord of everything I do and everything I say and everywhere I go. You be Lord of this day. And then I use what I heard months ago. This is a brand new day that's unblemished. We're starting out unblemished day. Help me, oh God, to walk with you so that I can come back tonight and present it to you unblemished. Amen? Think about that. You might write and pray that prayer. But the Lordship of Jesus Christ, using our talents for the glory of God. There's joy in ministry, and there's joy in giving. I say praise the Lord. Well, God bless you. I want you to stand with me, please. Stand with me. Just simple truth, but truth that we've invested our lives in. Hmm? It works. It works. Bow your heads with us, Matt. If uh, there's a little course that goes, he is Lord, he is Lord, he is risen from the dead, and he is Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Help us there a little bit. Just help us a little bit. Bow your heads with me. I appreciate what's already been said and the prayers that have been prayed. And I agree with your pastor. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know what you brought into this service. But God is faithful. Perhaps you're here this morning, and oh, you say, Pastor George, I'm not sure. I'm a Christian. I'm not sure. I don't know that I'm happy in Jesus. Well, God loves you so much. And Jesus paid the price on Calvary for you to come to give your heart to him. It pays to be a Christian. It's joyful to be a child of God. But some of you might be here to say, I haven't found my place yet. I want to. I want to. I want to use my talents for Jesus' sake. I just want to, I don't want to sit around on the stool of do nothing. I believe God's called me to serve, and I just need to invest myself. And I want to be an open vessel. I want to commit it to the Lord so that he can use me and live within me and work out of me. And maybe you're here to say, there are some areas of my life that's not under the lordship of Jesus. Amen. There are some areas of my life that's not under the lordship of Jesus. And I need this morning to pray and give it to the Lord and let him come and take me as I am to make me what he wants me to be. Heavenly Father, thank you for your precious word. Thank you for your precious word. Thank you for the simple truth. Just the simple truth of your word. Oh, bless your holy name. But Lord, if we need to touch heaven this morning, we need to pray about an issue. If you're not Lord of everything, Lord, before we leave this worship center, we want you to be totally in charge of our lives. So right now, right now, Lord, right now, we come and wait before you. Maybe there's some that like to come to this altar and meet the Lord here in a word of prayer. If so, just step out while they sing, okay, while they play right now. Just step out. I want Jesus to be Lord. I want Jesus to be Lord. I want him to own everything in my life. I don't want to give anything without his approval. I don't want to do anything without his knowledge. I want him to be Lord of everything. Would you like to pray? Heads bowed, eyes closed. Would you like to pray? Would you enjoy praying? Would you enjoy praying at the altar? Come on. There's two or three that are coming. There's two or three that are coming. God bless them. Thank the Lord. Come and kneel or sit or whatever. Come on. The Holy Spirit is here in this place. God is here. He wants all. He wants all. He wants the first fruits of our life. He wants us to be faithful. Praise be to God. Amen. To enjoy our relationship with Him. Amen. All hearts clear? All hearts clear? All hearts clear? Amen. Heavenly Father, take your word and use it today, I pray. Oh, we just want you to be Lord. We just want you to be Lord. We don't want to live a day outside of the umbrella of Lordship. So Lord, take us, possess us, fill us, mold us, 
Break us and use us for your glory is our prayer. Bless these that have come to pray. Bless them, I pray today. In Jesus' name, amen.